So we're here today to talk about the enterprise cloud journeys. I'm Matthew George and I'm here with Miles Brown, our senior cloud and DevOps advisor. We both work at Exit Certified, a leading IT training organization. Miles, you've been working in cloud technology for years. Can you tell us about how you became a cloud expert? I started uh, right out of college as a mainframe programmer, but I pretty quickly moved into more of a Oracle database programmer, uh, which set me up pretty well when Hadoop started to get popular. Uh, I did a lot with that. It was, it, you know, it's a distributed kind of analytics um, framework and it got very popular, but mostly on premises, right? Where you would, you know, set up a cluster of a hundred machines to work in parallel and do analytics. Well, when I started um, contracting around different jobs, not everybody had a hundred Linux boxes sitting around to do this. And so we started using uh, virtual machines from the cloud. So specifically AWS EC2 instances. And so that's sort of how I got into the cloud. And then eventually I became a cloud trainer, uh, first with AWS about seven years ago. And then uh, I started also doing Google Cloud classes. Right. So according to a recent report I read by Accenture, more than 90% of enterprises have adopted cloud in some capacity, and more than 90% of IT leaders expect to expand their cloud services in the next three years. Why is cloud such a massive trend right now? Well, it's a, it's a big trend, and it has been for a long time. You know, AWS started back in 2006, and then Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud came along in 2010, 2011, but it was really in you know, 2012, 2013, when the cloud really started to take off. It took off first with um, sort of startup kind of companies where that idea, you didn't have to have a big infrastructure. You didn't have to spend a bunch of money up front to build your IT infrastructure. Um, that became very, very popular with, with startups, but then pretty quickly enterprises started to notice. And that idea of trading your capital expenditure for a monthly operating expense, even if you weren't to save money, that's very attractive to a CFO. And so, um, you know, that started to get people in, involved looking at the cloud. And just that idea that we can sort of let somebody else take care of our data centers and not every organization has to be a good uh, data center management company. And, um, so that's sort of a big part of it. But then we see that there's all sorts of other benefits other than just the financial benefits, because those financial benefits don't come right away. You know, if you're uh, moving into the cloud, it, it usually takes years to do so. You're probably running, you know, both on premises and in the cloud for a while, right? So, so you don't immediately see those financial benefits, but you will see the other, other benefits, right? The ability to, to scale very quickly, to have uh, data centers around the world. And just the idea that you can provision things quickly and if they don't work out, you can get rid of them quickly. Um, what that really says is that, you know, you can try things out and the cost of failure is very low. And when the cost of failure is very low, what that really starts to engender is this, um, this sort of culture of innovation within your IT group. And that's very, very popular. Um, and so that's kind of a big reason these days why cloud is getting so very popular. Yeah, it's safe to see why it's become so popular. Yeah. In, a, in that recent Accenture report, which I mentioned just now, enterprises are only running 20 to 40% of their workload on the cloud and two thirds aren't getting the results they want right now. Yeah, um, there's sort of kind of a couple things at play there. First off, you know, I don't think you can expect most organizations to just quickly move all into the cloud because they already have an existing infrastructure that they already paid to build. So they might have a bunch of data centers. And so, you know, new development might happen in the cloud, but they have lots of things that are sitting already in data centers that they paid for, on machines that they paid for. And so it's only when those things start to get kind of older that they think about replacing them in the cloud. And, but most organizations I've seen, you know, for the, the foreseeable future have this sort of hybrid architecture where they have some things running on-prem and then other stuff running in the cloud. But I find that over time they realize, you know, they're seeing some real benefits from the cloud and they start to move off and move off the on-prem data centers. Um, the other thing you mentioned that two thirds of them aren't getting the results that they wanted, a lot of that is, 
you know, like I said, the, the return on investment isn't right away, right? You're, you end up actually spending more money in your initial move to the cloud, and it takes two, three years before you start to see some real benefits, but that's only if your people know how to use the cloud effectively, right? And that's kind of the bigger problem. I, I, I read another uh, survey of cloud leaders and it said 80% of them uh, attributed their unskilled workforce to the reason why, you know, like that was their biggest impediment to cloud adoption and, and really making use of the cloud. So I think that IT skills gap has something to do with it. Yeah, so you're really saying that IT employees do really need to take some basic cloud training from a cloud vendor to, to kind of close that gap, right? Yeah, well, that's a good start. You know, the, the cloud vendors all have authorized training. I mean, you can go to gray market training and, and, and find somebody who does AWS training. But what I find is that in the cloud, it's such a moving target. Things move really quickly that, you know, you have to have a dedicated team that's there to rebuild the curriculum every few weeks. And, and so that's what, you know, taking training from the cloud vendor does for you. But the downside of vendor, cloud vendor training is they are sort of, you know, really laser focused on their own technologies. And what we find is that most organizations, when they move to the cloud, you know, that, that change of platform to the cloud is just one step in a much larger digital transformation. So you just mentioned that buzzword, digital transformation, like, so what else does digital transformation encompass? Well, it's, it's that idea that, you know, you, you might be moving to the cloud, but you're also trying to um, really build your, your software in a better way that makes it, you know, quicker to deliver, easier to manage, uh, and take advantage of all those things in the cloud. And so what we find is that um, eventually people start to embrace what we call cloud native technologies. And what it really comes down to is the move to the cloud is just one piece, but it usually goes hand in hand with more of an adoption of DevOps and also, um, you know, taking those big monolithic architectures and breaking them down into microservices. Yeah, but again, that makes complete sense. So what are some of those possible skill gaps that we hear from customers about then? Yeah, well, I mean, I find that most customers They've embraced some agile technologies, but maybe they they've only done it wholeheartedly. Same thing with DevOps, you know. So there there might be some basic agile training. Uh, when it comes to DevOps, there's sort of different levels of training because that idea of DevOps is where we're trying to increase the communication between developers who build the software and the operations folks who who manage it. And um, you know, one way to do that is to restructure your teams into small cross-functional teams where you've got a few developers and testers and operations people together, right? And, uh, you know, and then the other part is maybe taking a developer who's pretty talented at uh, security and networking and making them more of a full stack developer. So there's a couple of ways to tackle it, but either way, it's going to end up being a, a real culture shift within your organization. So there's some sort of soft skills around that. And then there's the more, um, you know, processes like test-driven development to learn, uh, how to build a CI CD pipeline for continuous integration, continuous delivery, and then automation tools like Ansible and Chef that, you know, configuration management type, type stuff, uh, because another big tenet of DevOps is to try and automate as much as possible, right? So all of these things, you know, are, are sort of, around DevOps, just not just the culture shift, but the soft skills all the way down to deeply technical stuff. Same thing with the microservices, right? If you're going to take your big monolithic app and blow it up into thousands of microservices, you know, um, there's, there's some, some training on theory of how to do that, but then there's the, in practice, how are you going to implement those? And increasingly these days, it's using containers and Kubernetes, things like that, maybe, adding in some sort of a platform as a service or PaaS framework, things like, uh, like Red Hat OpenShift. These become even more popular if you're in a hybrid environment where you might be running these apps on-prem or in one or multiple clouds. So there's, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, that, that sounds like a lot to learn. Yeah, I mean, luckily you don't have to learn it all at once. You know, there's, um, 
you, you take sort of your cloud training, you take your, uh, your containers and Kubernetes training, and then maybe your PaaS training, you know, you can build one on the next. And there's a lot of resources out there, right? There's, there's really cheap self-paced sort of on-demand options all the way up to, you know, what we would consider the gold standard, which is instructor-led training. Well, you've been in training for 20 years now. How does training really help people close those skill gaps? I think there's uh, a couple of big benefits from especially instructor-led training where you're sort of given, here, here's three days where we're going to do an intensive look at these topics. You know, the self-paced training works for some people who are really self-motivated, um, but, but the instructor-led training tends to work for everybody because you're away from work, you're dedicated to learning this thing, and that's usually necessary because, you know, a lot of these technologies have a really steep learning curve. And it takes, you know, a bit of time to get over that an initial, you know, um, I, I don't know this technology, I don't know how to deal with it, right? And so we want to increase people's confidence with tools. We generally do that in those instructor-led training classes through hands-on labs, where they're actually using it. And so they, they build confidence with the tools. And another thing that we find, especially in the cloud, is that um, employees tend to be sort of resistant to change. Right. Why do I have to learn something new? This is working. Right. But there, there's always, you know, sort of bigger things at work. And so you say, no, you know, if we get you into the class, you start using it, you know, that usually gets you over, uh, over that fear of change. And then finally, what I find, you know, instructor led training does is it shows you, you know, everything that's possible on a platform rather than just what you learned on your own. And so what it'll do is it'll end up really maximizing the cloud benefits because you'll see more of the capabilities. Yeah, that, again, that makes complete sense. So looking at those 20 years, you've obviously spoken to a lot of students so across a lot of companies. Can, can you give us maybe an example of, uh, of an organization maximizing their cloud benefits? Sure. Um, I, can, I can probably talk about, I had a customer uh, that was using AWS, they were already using AWS. And uh, this group was an analytics group. They were using AWS EMR, which is the managed Hadoop cluster for doing all sorts of analytic workloads. And um, they were bringing new people onto the team. They had some people who knew what they were doing, but all self-taught, you know? And so they thought, well, let's get everybody into the training so that the new people can learn how it works, but even our experienced people can fill in the gaps from you know, they only learned what they needed to know. And uh, so we had this big group in there and we were talking about EMR and I explained to them how they could use spot instances, which is a way where you can sort of bid a low cost to get access to a big pool of compute. Um, very, very cheap. It's the cheapest way to, to use AWS, uh, but there's some uncertainty, right? And so there's only certain places where it makes sense. And in talking to them, I said, it sounds like all your dev and test clusters should be using spot instances. And they even had some production stuff where it could. And they, they had heard about the uncertainty. So they said, no, we're never going to touch it. But once they learned how it worked, they said, this could work. And so uh, the manager of this group was in the class. And so he came back the next day, having done some calculations, looking at their bill. And he said, I think you just saved us $300,000 per year, which is you know, good. Yeah. Wow. 300,000 is a lot of money. So it's probably safe to say they were pretty satisfied as a customer, right? Oh, for sure. And, and now they've become a very loyal customer of Exit Certified, you know, and they take not just AWS, but all kinds of training from us because they realized, you know, what you get out of that training is we're going to learn all the elements of that, of that uh, system, not just what we need to, the minimum we need. Yeah. So, it, so let's think about CIOs, training coordinators, and IT team leads who we work with all the time. What should they be looking for when they work with a training provider? Um, so I guess a good training provider has a variety of courses, right? So the, the ability to deliver um, content from all the major vendors and ideally authorized content that gets updated, as we mentioned, um, but also the, the sort of related cloud native technologies that fall, you know, the gaps that fall between the, the major vendors. And, um, 
you'd also want, you know, sort of soft skills. So like we talked about DevOps, culture shift, things like that, all the way down to deeply technical. And I guess you would want like learning paths for all the different kinds of roles. Um, when it comes to an actual, you know, when I think about a, a good training company, it's ideal if they have dedicated experienced instructors. A lot of training companies, you know, they don't actually have any internal staff. Everybody's just a contractor. And, you know, you don't know how much vetting they're doing of them. Well, you know, when I think about our, our instructor team, we have a bunch of instructors that are all on average more than 15 years in training, been dealing with those particular vendors for a long time. Uh, but beyond just the basic uh, of like good instructors and things, you, what you want is sort of end-to-end -end customer care, right? And so you would want a dedicated account manager who's your main point of contact. And I'm just thinking if I'm a training coordinator, I, I want one person that when I call, they pick up the phone, they know what we're dealing with. And um, initially we would probably start well before the training with you know, some sort of subject matter experts coming in and trying to assess your team's capabilities. What do they know now? What do they need to know? And help building those training plans. I do that a lot, you know, in my capacity with, with cloud and, and DevOps side of things, build a lot of those sort of training plans for, for organizations. And then, of course, you know, in the class, you want high quality delivery, uh, whether it's, you know, physically in class or virtual. Uh, and ideally, there'll be hands-on labs uh, really ideally, you, the hands-on labs are even available after class, not just during the duration of class. Uh, that varies depending on who the vendors are, whether or not that's possible. But, uh, but those hands-on labs are important, right? And then usually after class, you would want some sort of post-class follow-up where we can find out, you know, hey, how did the class go? Let's look at the survey results, see what people thought of it. And what are some of the discussions in class that, that lead us to think what the next steps are, right? Um, and then finally, you know, making the registration process, if you're a large enterprise or you're a training coordinator for a large enterprise, um, having that sort of centralized, easy management of people finding the courses and signing up for them. We have a portal that we can build for a given customer where it shows just the classes that we've chosen that are authorized and makes it easy for them to, to sign up for them. And then on the back end, we've got nice tracking and monitoring where you can see your budgets and how they're getting used. And so that's that's some of the stuff you would want in a training company. Yeah, that's that's a great list there. So would it be safe to say that you think that X is certified to deliver all of those promises and benefits? Yeah, I really do. You know, I mentioned we have we have the instructor team, we've got the customer care. And and I don't think I would have stayed here this long if it wasn't a, a great training company like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I think Exer Certified is um, is probably the best in North America at this. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. So yeah, thank you, Mark. Well, thank you for jumping on and talking through all these points today with Miles. This has been some great information and thank you everyone for watching this. We invite all of you to continue learning more information. If you visit the Exit Certified website and you're free to download the Accelerate Your Enterprise Cloud Journey, simply visit exitcertified.com forward slash cloud journey to keep learning.